very good uh, morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute pleasure for me to speak here at uh, ICT Spring after two years of video messages. Uh, to be here live at this event is, is really um, uh, very thrilling and, and, uh, and, and, a, and a tremendous pleasure. We're just back, and Carlo Thielen mentioned it, we're just back from Canada where we attended uh, the Collision Conference, which is the big tech uh, conference uh, in, uh, um, on the East Coast in, of North America. Uh, very exciting, 35,000 participants, a little bit bigger than ICT Spring, uh, but uh, it's pretty much the same vibe when I go through the hall. It's, uh, and seeing some of the same people that uh, were, went along with us uh, to Canada. So it's, a, it's really a pleasure uh, to be here, very excited. Um, as you know, digitalization, tech is also a big uh, priority of uh, the Ministry of Economy, as it is for the entire government. Um, and uh, ICT Spring is very uh, important, instrumental in uh, forwarding, in, in developing the agenda of a, a digital economy. Now, the, uh, the conference uh, this year uh, takes place against, um, although the weather outside is absolutely spectacular, takes, out, takes, takes place against a bit of a gloomy uh, backdrop, one must say. We are um, confronted with um, a context where we are just coming out of a pandemic, uh, COVID-19, um, which is not yet completely over. Uh, we are also seeing a terrible situation with this um, senseless, terrible war in Ukraine, which started on 25th, 24th of February um, this year, which leaves us all in a very different world, which leaves us in, in, in a different geopolitical uh, context um, that is... Um, I think also prompting us to reinvent uh, globalization. We also, of course, have a climate crisis and a biodiversity crisis that is getting ever more urgent. And uh, of course, in all this, we see now very high inflation. We have high energy prices, uh, which were high already during uh, COVID-19, but which have been driven up further, of course, because of the, of the war uh, in, in Ukraine, all this, of course, also provoking uh, some social unrest. Um, people are losing purchasing power, uh, social unrest. Uh, governments have to take measures um, against this, as we did in Luxembourg uh, by way of our tripartite agreement and the Solidaritäts Pact um, in, uh, in, in, um, in March, April uh, this year. So, all, the, and all, this, all these crises and all these, these complicated contexts are related to each other, feed into each other, and make the situation even more, more complex. Now, I, I learned a new word, word yesterday uh, to describe all this, and uh, the world in which we are living, it's, uh, I learned it from a, an environmental um, uh, expert uh, who called it the VUCA world. So VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, and I think that describes it pretty well. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the really describes the backdrop against which ICT Spring is taking place uh, this year. Now, you're asking me why, you know, why, why are you talking about all this in a, in a, in a tech conference uh, when we are here to uh, talk about the latest innovation in uh, digitalization, in tech, startups, a uh, lot of excitement and all that. So, I'm bringing it up because I'm convinced that um, it is at the core of what also the digital um, community, uh, the digital world needs to, um, needs, needs to come up with, with the challenges that are facing also this uh, community. And I would like to spend a little bit of time to talk about something which is also at the center uh, of the agenda uh, to solve this, um, this, uh, this crisis, and which is often referred to as the twin transition. Now, the twin, transi twin tra transition is really this idea to solve all these problems by uh, pushing an ecological and also a digital agenda. In Luxembourg, as you know, as many of, of you know here in, in the room, uh, we started to think about this with the, the Rifkin uh, process, the third industrial revolution, which started in 2015 and which really attempted to bring all this together, to solve um, the ecological crisis and to get this ecological transition right by combining it and by powering it really by, by digitalization. 
And I think we are still very much also in that, in that movement. Um, and I think that is the challenge for all of us, to see how we can, how we can uh, use digitalization as, as a tool, as an instrument to push, um, to change our economies and our societies, to de decarbonize our societies and our economies, and at the same time, of course, also to advance uh, in our innovation efforts. Now, I think we should also, when we talk about the twin twin transition, first make sure that we do not mistake means with ends. Digitalization, in my mind at least, should really be a technological tool aiming mainly at enhancing productivity and well-being, reducing costs, creating jobs, and improving services. That's what it, that's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a tool, it's a technological enabler. The green transition, on the other hand, aims, is an objective. It aims at preserving basically a livable planet and the supply of essential goods and ecosystem services. Now, we all know that digitalization also has an environmental cost. About 10% of Europe's energy consum consumption and 4% of its greenhouse gas emissions are dedicated to the digital environment. Now, I think the digitalization we all have to strive for and we try, have to try to achieve is one that helps us reduce rather than increase our material footprints, reduce rather than increase our vulnerabilities to growing resources scarcity, increasing commodities uh, prices, or climate and biodiversity related threats. We need to ensure that digital technologies do not contribute more to the pro problem, but rather consume less energy and help save more energy than they actually consume. Now, there are several ways of, of going about this and achieving this. I'll give you a few examples. You can start by making energy networks both more stable and more flexible to also better incorporate renewables. You can increase energy and materials efficiency in construction and production processes. You can enhance the sharing and maintenance of buildings and equipment. You can also extend lifetimes of appliances, fight programmed obsolescence. You can improve the loss, losses detection or damage control, or by observing land, weather and the climate by satellite, feed early warning systems and help prepare for climate change adaptation. These are just a few examples. And I, will also, I would also like to mention a few more examples where like the Luxembourg government is really uh, also investing into uh, to, um, to get it right. There are a few sectors that are relevant to Luxembourg and you all know them. The first one is the space sector. Digital tools here can be very useful to capture and analyze data that can help measuring performance as well as optimizing emissions and energy use. This is exactly what sustainable space technologies are about. For example, Earth observation via satellite can help monitor flooding. It can also help improve agriculture. It can help prevent droughts and uh, other um, ecological problems. In the logistics uh, sector then, and I, I know you, were, you are going to have a talk on this uh, this afternoon, digital tools can help to optimize costs, transport efficiency, and communication means by enhancing the sharing of equipment. And then there is the health sector. We are uh, currently in the middle of a medical revolution where we are seeing with the development of new digital technologies such as artificial intelligence, the use of medical data from electronic patient records, the computing capabilities of high-performance computing, a, new, a whole new range of possibilities in medicine, um, a new field in um, digital health, preventive, preventative health, personalized health. All these things are powered by digitalization and by a data economy, and that is something that is very high on the agenda of uh, the Luxembourg government right now in all its components, be it the Ministry of Economy, the Ministry of Health, uh, but also players from research, uh, etc. All these things enable true change and innovation in the field of health. 
And we saw that during the pandemic, thanks to the precise monitoring of the data, such as number of infections, incidence rate, monitoring wastewater, we could remove the sanitary measures and reopen the borders much faster, much more efficiently than many other countries around the world. Then there is the industry sector. By using innovative digital solutions, we can contribute to develop sustainable production methods, as well as sustainable business practices that are essential to remain competitive. It is a field also where we have already examples in Luxembourg. I only think about Husky and uh, Goodyear that have Industry 4.0 projects here, right here in, in, in Luxembourg, where data, of course, is absolutely key. This is also essential if we want to progress in the promotion of circular economy, which is crucial, of course, for increasing the overall efficiency of the economy by reducing the consumption of resources. So, I think in all, all these fields, um, an efficient uh, digitalization incorporating data is going to bring us forward. But again, the message here is, is really, I think, that digitalization is not a zero-sum game. It has an opportunity cost, and the resources and carbon space used up by digitalization are not available for other essential uses, such as running water and sanit sanitation systems or public transport system networks, schools or hospitals, or such as building infrastructures, producing electricity, industrial goods, and of course also food. So really, the, uh, the point really here is that we need to prioritize certain things. There are things in digitalization that are more meaningful than, than others. The fact is that today, we have five billion internet users who spend an average of seven hours a day on the internet, and therefore, thereof, 2.5 hours on social media. Now, I also spend way too much time on social media. I like to look at Twitter, I like to look at Instagram. Uh, I have built in this uh, time limit where they tell me when I spend five minutes and I should stop doing it. Um, but I will let you all judge by what is, of what is useful and what is less useful, but I think we all agree that um, it is important to set resources allocation priorities and make a distinction between publicly vital and private entertainment digitalization. This is also a message that I think today is more relevant than ever of personal responsibility in acting in a more sober way. This is now very much very high on the agenda of course with the energy crisis that we are seeing um, but it is not enough to reduce uh, your driving speed uh, on the highway or to turn down the temperature a little bit uh, in, your, uh, in your house, it is also, I think, about thinking how we are used, how, ma how many digital tools we are using, how we are using them, and to have this in mind that it is, again, uh, it has a certain environmental and energy uh, cost. Now, really, the question is also, what can governments do to set the right framework to promote the right type of digitalization? Well, I think the first point is really to think about making the right investments. Government investments should primarily focus on vital infrastructures and research and innovation programs. In Luxembourg, of course, we are there in a European context. We have, first of all, to reinforce the European single market, absolutely crucial for a small open economy such as Luxembourg, but we also have to um, take on board the EU's strategic open autonomy, in particular for energy, but also critical resources of water, food, drugs, or microchips, all on the agenda of Europe should also be on our agenda. That also, again, of course, connects with investment in ways of securing protection against cyber attacks and natural disasters, of preventing shortages of strategic resources, and of generating low carbon energy. Finally, another point that we need to consider in getting this transition right, that it is critical to enable a majority of people to take on new economic opportunities, to change jobs and to develop their potential, be it in high tech or also in low tech. 
in uh, Montreal, I was caught for 45 minutes in an elevator with uh, 12 other people. And we, were we were very happy, happy to get rescued by firemen who opened uh, the elevator in a very manual and very low-tech uh, way. So let's not forget about low-tech jobs, about crafts. These are also very important. If we have a high-performance computer, we should remember that it also needs electricians to keep them cool and ventilated. This is really the twin transition that we are aiming to bring about. One that sees greater reduction in negative environmental effects and lower resources use and pollutants release with digitalization rather than without digitalization. I think in doing that, the opportunities, the economic and also the societal, societal uh, opportunities are enormous. We are doing that through uh, government strategies with all our partners, be it Chambre de Commerce, be it all the, the many other partners in, in business through public-private partnerships with research, with strategies such as Ons Wirtschaft Humor, which combines this um, digital, digital and uh, ecological agenda, but also uh, through foresight. Rifkin was the first attempt at the first, um, the starting point really of this foresight exercise where we try to imagine the uh, Luxembourg economy of tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And this is uh, something that we, are, we have made, um, I really could, I think, the conclusion of uh, Rifkin, but we are bringing it into the, these lessons that we learned through Rifkin, bringing them into Luxembourg strate strategy, which is a foresight exercise where we are trying to learn from the mega trends that we are seeing today and try to understand and draw conclusions from what these uh, things mean for Luxembourg and uh, for positioning uh, Luxembourg in the world of um, uh, tomorrow. So that is really what we are doing and we are really also counting on everyone in this room uh, to contribute uh, to, that, um, to that effort. Ladies and gentlemen, I, see, I will see, say a few final words about startups because I know there are a lot of startups here in the room. I saw uh, some of them uh, by, when crossing the hall and really also looking very much forward to visiting uh, the stands after uh, this little speech. Um, startups, of course, are very key in, um, in bringing about this um, innovation agenda that, uh, that I have just uh, described. We have a startup ecosystem that has very strongly developed in the last uh, decade, which today has more than 500 companies bringing innovative digital and data-driven solutions in key sectors of economic diversification, such as fintech, clean tech, uh, space, um, health tech, of course, industry 4.0, and cybersecurity. And uh, as you all know, there are going to be a lot of exciting uh, events uh, around startups uh, in the context of ICT Spring, such as the 12th edition of Fit for Start, where we, where we will have the graduation ceremony, um, which will take place um, tomorrow. Uh, very exciting, also Catapult, Catapult Kickstarter, uh, which is organized in partnership with The Loft, also going to be, uh, which will take place uh, tomorrow, and I'm sure that there will be, once again, uh, many exciting uh, new um, companies, new startups, which will be, um, be um, receive prizes or, or be, be launched in the context of, these, um, of all these different um, events. I would also like to tell you that, um, or bring your attention once again, again to the fact that the uh, national startup uh, ecosystem will have its own directory, thanks to Lux Innovation, uh, which is uh, being put online on www.startupluxembourg.com. Uh, this directory will gather key information about each startup, such as its field of uh, activity, target markets and contact details, therefore also, thereby also creating really an, an entry gate and a point of contact for our startup um, community. This is really a directory that will complete the mapping carried out by Lux, Lux Innovation. So once again, also I invite you all to attend the graduation ceremony that will take place here, um, right, right here tomorrow. So to conclude, um, I would like first to thank you for listening to me and by saying that 
despite, despite maybe the little bit gloomy start to my speech, I think that this time is also full of opportunities and uh, full, of, um, full of challenges, obviously, but also full of opportunities. And then I remain fundamentally optimistic that uh, by working all together, uh, by collaborating both nationally in this uh, ecosystem that we have created in Luxembourg, but also internationally, and that is why we are going to places like Canada, why we will go to South Korea uh, later this year, and uh, to uh, also uh, many other uh, places, by collaborating also internationally, we will uh, get there uh, in the end. Thank you very much for listening.